Hello and welcome back to Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to sharpen an image in Affinity Photo using the high pass filter effect. So for starters let's open up the image I want to use. So in Windows I'll open my file explorer. In Mac I'll open up my finder window. Here's the image so I'll just click and drag this into Affinity. And I'll just minimize this. The first thing I'll do is come over here and right click on my image and go to duplicate. So now we have two copies of this image. Next I can add the high pass sharpening by coming over here and clicking on the live filters and come up here to high pass. So here I am inside of the live high pass dialog. You'll see I only have one slider here, the radius slider. If I use the slider and turn this up, you're going to start to see edge details. So basically what this is determining is the size of those edge details and I can manually type a value in here if I want. But if I hold control and zoom in, you'll also see, obviously there's a lot of gray going on, but some of the colors are coming in as well, and a lot of the original image. So basically a lot of details that are not edge details are coming through. So the key with the live high pass filter is you really just want there to be the edge details showing here and as little of the color pixels as possible. So anytime, for example, you start to see the skin tones in here, that means you're showing too many details with this filter. So you really just want to get on the cusp of barely being able to see those edge details. So now you can see these are the details that are being enhanced by this effect. And there's a little checkbox here called monochrome. I like to keep this checked. The reason if I hold control zoom in, you'll see for example that her lips right now are black and white. If I uncheck that, they're going to show some color. And this pretty much creates aberrations when I apply the blend mode, which you're gonna see in a second. And I don't really want those color aberrations. They just look like defects. So by clicking monochrome, it's going to turn that to black and white. And now all we're keeping here really for the most part is the contrast. So obviously we have the opacity slider. I can turn this effect all the way off or make it just partially visible. That just helps with decreasing the intensity of the effect. But I'll keep that set to 100%. The blend mode here is the key. So you can choose from any of the blend modes that are only going to keep the contrast of this high pass layer. So let me click on here and really all you have to rely on is this section right here. So between overlay and hard mix and hard mix doesn't look great. So if I just hover my mouse over each one of these, you can see they have varying degrees of sharpening added depending on which one I select. So some of them have less sharpening, some of them have more. In this case, I like the way linear light looks. So I'll click on that and we can come over here and uncheck the high pass to get a preview. So looking over here, that's before, that's after. So definitely more sharpening going on. Now that we have a blend mode turned on, we can continue to play around with this to see what looks best. And also I'll show you if I uncheck the monochrome option, for example, let me come over here. You can see there's some chromatic aberrations happening here. If I turn the monochrome on, you can see it does a good job of getting rid of that. In this case, it's like a light blue color that's showing up there that shouldn't be there. Once you're happy with the result, you can just exit out of here. You can reset to return to the default values, delete if you want to get rid of it entirely and exit out of here, or merge if you want to merge it with the original layer, which will make it destructive. So in this case, I'll just exit out of here to keep my changes. So because we duplicated the original image at the beginning, something else we can do here for an additional effect is add a layer mask and just mask out all of the sharpening around the subject. So let's say we didn't want the background to be sharper, we just want the foreground to be sharper. We can use this layer mask to create that effect. So I'll just click on the background layer here and come over here and click on the mask layer. And I'll hold control, zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna do this fairly quickly. So I'll grab my paintbrush tool, make sure my colors are set to black and white. Black will conceal the sharpening going on. So if I paint black on the background areas of the image, it'll be very subtle, but I'll show you guys an after here in a moment. And if I release my mouse, you can see all the areas I've painted so far. So you guys can spend more time on this, but I'm just very loosely painting. So let me hold control, zoom in. So let me turn the mask off. You can see it's sharper here when the mask is off. 
and when I turn it on, it's blurred in the background, whereas the foreground is still sharp. So if you don't want to enhance the edge details of the background, like in this case, there's a lot of edges going on with the brick wall and it can be a bit too much sharpening, just add this mask and you can mask that out and draw more attention to the subject. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.